Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode I'm going to take the opportunity to show you guys one of Photoshop's powerful but hidden features and that is its ability not only to work with video but to convert video into the animated GIF format. Now um, the reason I, I thought about this recently is because I wanted to simulate something from my phone on my website. And rather than post the video on my website, I just figured it'd be easier for this few seconds just to make it an animated GIF. That way, there's no compatibility issues whatsoever. All browsers support that format. And um, I wouldn't have to worry about the person clicking on it to see it because it just loads like an image. It will just play. All right, so let me show you what I, what I, where I came from, what I ended up with, and then we'll do the part in the middle. So where I came from, uh, here, let's go ahead and drag my uh, phone over so you guys can see it. So here's my iPhone 6S Plus. And there's a picture of my dog, Lisa, right there on the uh, iPhone. And this was taken with the iPhone's new ability to do live photos. And basically, all a live photo really is, is it's the, the 12 megapixels still. But on both sides of it, Apple plays a few seconds of video before and after the still. So you can kind of capture that moment before the person poses, or you can capture that moment of the child doing something before the, you got the great shot. And so live photos, is, it's nice. <clears throat> it's a feature you turn on and turn off as needed. Um, so you can just take regular pictures and never use this feature. But if you use it, it's kind of cool. So let me show you how you activate it. I've got the image here on my phone. All I have to do is just hold my finger down on the image and when I hold my finger down, you would see and hear those uh, few seconds of video before and after the still. So there it is. If I let go, it stops. And if I were to hold it down again, we'd see it again. It would just repeat. All right, so now that's what I wanted to show people what it looks like. But how do you show them that on a website without actually showing the video? Uh, so I'm going to move this over. And now let's take a look at what I did on my website. So I'm going to go to my uh, website here. I did an iPhone 6S Plus review. You can find it at terrywhite.com. And uh, if we scroll down, it's the review talking about the phone. I do this once a year on my blog. But if we get to the live picture section, we see the live picture. I, I didn't click on anything. I didn't do anything. There's the pause. There's a few seconds after. There's a few seconds before, there's a still video. So it's just a looping animated GIF on my blog. And that's what I wanted to simulate is what live pictures look like. So I thought, hmm, Photoshop, let's do it. All right, so uh, let's jump over to Photoshop. And let me go to my uh, my finder here, my operating system to show you what, what we're working with here. And actually I see that I'm using um, I'm using two different ones. I'm using the still and a movie. I, I shot like three or four of these in a row. I just noticed the numbers are different, but it won't matter. This will still work. All right, so first, here's a still. Uh, press the space bar here. There's the actual still. That's the still I loved. And I didn't realize until I actually plugged my new phone into my computer and start transferring stuff over that you not only get the still, but if you shot it as a live picture, you get... A movie file as well so in here is a movie file of that three seconds and I thought oh that makes it even easier because now I can actually use those all right so let's do this let's drag the movie file into Photoshop so when I do that Photoshop will start reading the video format again no editing came right off my phone as that movie I drag it in and what Photoshop will do is it will open it up just like it does still pictures today, but it will also open up one more feature and that's the timeline down at the bottom. So uh, again, this is kind of a high res uh, video here, but here it is and boom, it popped open the timeline at the bottom. Now that timeline's always there. It's a tab. You can click on it anytime you want. You can make videos out of anything. If you just have a series of stills, if you want to do a video slideshow. But here's the video. I can uh, do what's called scrubbing. I can just move the playhead through the video. 
I could actually play the video. I could hit the space bar or just hit the play button right here. And that will play the video even with the audio. So that will play it and we get to see it. Now, what I want to do is I want to cut this video and play a few, just like live pictures. I want to play a few seconds of video before, then the still, then a few seconds of video after. So I, I want to find the sweet spot to cut it. So let me move the playhead back. And basically what I'm looking for is that frame that's kind of close to what we saw in the still. And since this isn't the exact same video, it's not going to be the same. Okay, that's where she's looking completely away. All right, so then we she turns, she turns, she turns. And again, right about there maybe. Nope, down a little bit. Right there. That would be the still I took from this video. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the tool here. I can basically grab the split at playhead tool and just click it. All I have to do is move the playhead where I want to cut this video into two pieces, click the button, and voila, I've got my two pieces. So now I've got one video here and one video here. And notice what it's doing on the layers panel. On the layers panel, it's actually making a separate layer. So we have layers for everything we're doing on that timeline. It made the separate layer for me. Okay, got the two pieces of video. Now I need the still for in between. So we're gonna go in and uh, let's go back to the operating system here. Now we can either double click that still or let's see if we can drag it in. I'm not tried this in this um, particular version yet, but let's see if we can do this. And yes, it pulled it in. Notice it added it to the timeline and it even pulled it in and sized it to be the right size for the, uh, the frame. Great. So I'm just going to hit the enter key or return to lock it in. Okay, so now we have one video, second video, and just a still. Now that still, by default, is five seconds long. I don't need it to stand still for five seconds. Maybe two or three seconds will be enough. So I want to shrink this down. And luckily, all I have to do is just go over to the edge my pointer or my selection tool turns into uh, a video trimming tool. So I can go ahead and just trim this down. And it's even giving me a readout for the duration. It's letting me know when I hit that three second mark so I can let go. All right, there it is, three seconds. So now I have three seconds of still, nothing moving. Now I need to get it in between the two videos because it's video, still, video. How do I do that? Well, the easiest way is to just drag the second video behind the still on the timeline. When I let go, it automatically corrects everything and shifts everything around. So now I've got the edit that I want. I can go ahead and play, still, play. And again, so video, still playing for three seconds, video. Great so far. So now, um, if this was going to be a video, then I might want to even go ahead and add some transitions. So you can add a transition maybe to fade it from black on the end, fade it from black at the uh, beginning, and there you go. But again, this is just an animated GIF that's going to loop, so I don't need to add any transitions, but just wanted to point out where the transitions are. Now, there's one more thing that I didn't do on my website that I typically do on my stills. I normally add my watermark, my logo. Well, I remember that in my libraries panel, if I go to my library, I've actually got, oh, that's the wrong my library, hang on. I've got another my library here somewhere, I believe. There it is, there's the other my library. That'll teach me for having two libraries with the exact same name. But anyway, let's go ahead and scroll down. And in my library, I've got a TW logo. So I want to use that logo. Drag it right on to the scene. It's going to show me something. It's going to create a smart object. I'm okay with that. It's going to put it right at the top. Now, why don't we see it? Like I see the bounding box for it, but why don't we see the logo? Because look at what it did. 
it put put the logo at the end of the timeline, but the playhead's all the way here at the beginning. So the playhead only shows you, or you only see in the frame where the playhead is. The logo's at the end, the playhead's not. So I know the logo's there. I'm gonna go ahead and just even just use my imagination, size it down, and then hit enter to commit to it. Now it looks like it disappeared, and it didn't disappear, it's just further down in time. There it is. So now we have video still video logo. Not quite what I had in mind. I actually want logo the entire time video still video. But we can take care of that in the layers panel because in the layers panel it added that TW logo as a layer. So if I drag that up and I sometimes have an issue dragging this above. There we go. If I drag it up above that video folder now it's a separate layer above the video group. And now I can move it above everything else. I can go ahead and put it at the beginning. I can stretch it out to make it take up the full length of the video. And now we have that logo no matter what's on the screen. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, that logo's transparent, how'd that work? When I originally created that logo as a Photoshop file with no background, I saved it to the library with no background or a PNG or ping file because ping files can be transparent. If you do a JPEG, JPEGs always have to have a background. So even if it was transparent in Photoshop, a JPEG is gonna end up with a white background. That's just the default. But pings or, or transparent Photoshop files work great in the library. Okay, so now I've got this all set the way I want. How do we get this out of Photoshop? And how do we get it as an animated GIF? Well, first of all, let's say you wanted a video. We'll go up to our file menu, export, render video so that's how you get that's how you get a video back out of photoshop you bring videos or stills or just stills and you want a video file at the end of the day render video since i want an animated gif at the end of the day i'm going to do what i've always done for the web and that is save for web because save for web lets me create animated gifs so let's do save for web. Now, it defaults to what I use the most. It's going to default to a JPEG. That's okay for now, but before you make it change to GIF in the preset, go ahead and size your image down because that's going to be a huge file. 1080 by 1440 was the size of that original video. We're going to drop this down to maybe 500 height pixels. So now it's 375 by 500. Now you can make your change and it won't take forever for it to try and make a GIF at that huge size. So GIF, uh, 128, 64, 32, what's the difference? And it's really the amount of colors and dithering. Since it's a black and white puppy on a gray cement sidewalk, 64 is probably good enough. I might even be able to get away with 32. The lower the number, the less quality, less colors, but also the smaller the file size. All right, so now it's it's giving me a little spinny wheel thing where it's trying to convert and show me a preview of this, what it would look like as a GIF. And again, the quality looks great, but the size is huge. It's 3.7 megs. Now, now you have to start thinking about games you can play to make it take up less space. So let me see what 32 looks like. 32 might be enough. No, 32 is not enough. Even though it dropped it down a full meg, all the dark and shadows are starting to fill in. And no, I can't live with that. So let's go back up to 64. And I want to keep the quality. I want to keep everything else the same. So in, the only other way to reduce this down to get it smaller for the web is to simply change the size of it. I don't really need it to be 375 by 500. People will get the idea if it's a smaller, smaller uh, pixel dimension. So how about 400? That'll uh, take a few seconds to render it and drop it down. So let's let it do that. And there it is. So that dropped it down a full meg just by knocking off 100 pixels on the longest dimension. I could go smaller, but 2.39 megs in today's world is probably okay. So let's see, for example, uh, we still estimate uh, basically even on dial-up, which is funny. But anyway, uh, good because then this is a legacy uh, feature. So let's go to, I, I like to start at, I think most people on their home internet definitely has at least one megabit of service. So it would take 25 seconds to load this on what I consider 
one of the slowest connections around. And your mobile phone under LTE is even faster than that. 4G is faster than that. So 25 seconds is a long time if that were the only thing they're looking at. But keep in mind, that's way down on the page. So while they're reading the post, the rest of that stuff, or the, the, the image will be loading while they're reading the rest of the stuff on there. So by the time they scroll down to that picture, it's loaded, it's animating. Now again, if you wanna make it smaller, just keep dropping the size down. All right, so now the only other thing to remember, and this is a biggie, after, even after you change the size each time, you gotta to remember to go back and change the loop option to forever. Because what that tells it to do is loop the image continuously. All right, so now we'll go ahead and save it. It's gonna be pretty quick to save. We'll call it uh, Lisa Annie for Lisa Animate. We'll save it to the desktop. And like I said, it's pretty quick. So now if we go out to the desktop, We'll see, and we close this folder. We'll see our Lisa Annie right there. And let's bring up a browser. I'll bring up uh, Safari this time because Safari likes to play these pretty easily. We'll just drag this right into Safari to see it. And there it is. Freeze, animate, loop, animate, freeze. Or motion, I should say. It's not really animation. All right, so motion, freeze, three seconds, motion, loop back to the beginning, motion, freeze. So it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. And this time we got the logo in there for the entire time. So that's how to take a video or stills, you can do the frames of stills, and create a animated GIF formatted file that you can now upload to the web, share with others. They don't need anything special to look at this because Animated GIF has been working in browser since the 90s. So we don't have to do anything else, but just upload it. So with that, take care. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.